left school at sort of 13, went to technical school in Clonus for two more years. Halfway through that I started to join up with a radio correspondence course in a college in Wales and eventually got to going over to Wales to do some of the practical stuff. A bit by bit I got that finished by about 1958, which was City and Guilds of London then, that was the achievement, which wouldn't be much talked about nowadays, but it was quite a good qualification at that time, which got me to start working on radios as an apprentice first, and then eventually to be able to start to work on televisions in the 60s. The service department, as you'd call it, or would be known as that, would have always been at the backs of television shops in, in the high street, you know. And like I worked for a lifetime in places like that, you know, and you were kind of hid up the back and you were a strange, mysterious character that smoked a hundred cigarettes a day and and uh, sometimes didn't shave and sometimes two different shoes on you. And I survived that bit. And then I set this up on my own. And it's almost, it doesn't have to be a replica of anywhere I ever worked, but it is kind of the same way in that I am right-handed, so I sit the same way at a bench. Half the things that you see up on high shelves would have been salvaged, basically, to be able to get this or that little bit off a whole panel, which in some cases would be uh, obsolete, not available, and somebody's very, very glad to get it. Gets their old telly going or their radio. And so even though it looks a cluttered mess of junk, it isn't. There's still plenty of action there, and can be when it's needed. The television business at the minute is well, first of all, it's sales, of course. Secondly, it's repairs and service. We are also agents for electric fencing, observation cameras for cows calving and livestock in general. Um, basically, those are the things we sell, the products we sell. The rest is repairs. We do install satellite, including Freeview satellite, Freeview set-top boxes, which are now becoming popular as people want to go digitised and uh, even normal everyday aerial work, climbing roofs, putting up aerials, taking down aerials, repairing aerials, please fix it if you can and keep down the bill, that's the usual sing-song there. So we do our best for people to not create much debt or too many bills. Living in a rural society here, people are conservative. They're not as flamboyant as people who live in cities and kind of throw stuff away. I have repaired radios and televisions about five years after they're done, doing Lazarus jobs, you know, at minimum cost, of course, even sometimes using second-hand reclaimed parts from disused other pieces of equipment. And I suppose I would be generally known as that as a very conservative person that I don't waste anything. Anybody that could get over the beginnings of colour in 1968 and survive that and still go back into mainstream television engineering is tough cookie, I'll tell you. I still work away even though I often think of retirement. And what worries me about retirement is not the lack of money or doing the business, is what would I do with myself. The wife Kathleen says, God forbid the day Sean retires because it'll drive her up the wall. She's worried about her mental stability when I do retire. We have 30 acres of land here, we have 12 cattle, we keep 12 bullocks annually. So we can sell six and winter six and then buy six and so on. And that's continuity from the bit of the farm and keeps it in use. We make hay, which I sell, and we make uh, silage, which we keep for our own use for our shed in the winter. We grow our own spuds and a few bits of vegetables as much as anyone would want and um, kind of semi-organic, not fully. Bit, bit of fertilizer and a bit of spray against the blight. I went on the air in April 1971, broadcasting from a spare bedroom in our house. We were only married one year at the time, and uh, I did it as a, first of all, a technical challenge to think. I'd spent all my life working on the receiving end of radios and eventually televisions as we do. And then I decided, right, have a go at the other end, try transmitting, see what that's like. I built it from ex-army surplus parts, old valves, old penny bits of things, made coils, ground the crystals myself, really, really making a radio transmitter. And then just to prove that it works, through all and wide, we actually started to do a two-hour show Saturday night and Sunday night 
from 9.30 to 11.30 playing mostly American country and western and indeed local show bands, the likes of Big Tom, Larry Cunningham, they all supplied us with albums of LPs and indeed 7-inch EPs for, for material to play. And it was a wonderful achievement and a great satisfaction to me to even do that. I was pioneering, I thought I was Marconi all over again. It was mostly at night and it was mostly a hub because I was only a year married, started a family. And uh, it, was, it was just something to be at. And a wonderful achievement when you got it done. And the way you knew it worked because we didn't have a telephone, we didn't have definitely no mobiles or anything. And the way we know it's working is people coming up onto the street with requests written on pieces of cement bags and flower bags and kids' school books. Please play blah 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 for so and so whose birthday is tomorrow. And do not forget being illegal pirating. You wouldn't ask anybody are you getting it because he could be the postmaster who'd be out to nab you or the local sergeant or somebody, anybody that was of a legal status might be out to grab you as a pirate. So I had to do a few moves here and there, change the dress, had a takedown procedure perfectly honed down to about 15 minutes, gone and reset at another address with another aerial and another earth system. So I had three of those. One was north of the border and if they came pressure on there, and they did, we had to jump straight back into the free state and reset, redo and go back on the air again. And we done that about three, four times. And every time it was just the same routine. And I remember once while we were in the north, north of the River Finn, which was technically the UK, and that time there was army helicopters going about every morning on patrol, of course. And I remember coming up with the idea now the aerial was 60 feet high from one pole to another and we let it down one Sunday and I hung a few derelict shorts and trousers and knickers or whatever we could get our hands on on it so that the army might think from an overhead view that they might think it's a close line. Now the woman that could put clothes up on a line 60 foot high would be some very tall person. You know, but we, we, it was never the army that made us move from that address. There was another bit of pressure on the road actually on the ground and we had to do a runner one night in a boat up the river Finn to a friend's house in the moonlight and the river was in flood and there was places we were in the flood and not in the river and when we got there eventually and got saved our transmitter and a, a boat full of LP records. That was the most dramatic occurrence we had in the whole spiel of local radio. But it was good crack, I enjoyed it.